The Boys in the Boat by Daniel James Brown. Podcast by Rap Boys Books. Part 1. The Plot The Boys in the Boat is an impossibly optimistic legend that came out of the Great Depression and World War II eras. The characters in this story survive unspeakable hardships, overcome incredible odds, and manage to defeat their opponents, all while maintaining this sense of quiet dignity and humility that you just don't find today. They don't call themselves the greatest generation for nothing. In this case, we read all about a classic underdog named Joe Rands. Abandoned by his family at a young age, several times actually, Rands is the epitome of a working-class hero. He manages to somehow find his way to the University of Washington, where Coach Ulbrichsen has plans to draft the ultimate rowing team to bring to the 1936 Olympics in Berlin. And you guessed it, against all odds, Franz makes it onto that team, and along with eight other men goes to defeat Hitler's specimens of Aryan perfection to win the gold. It's a classic story about good versus e- evil, and it's all true. As told by the author Rantz himself, As he lay dying of congestive heart failure, it truly is an inspiring story. Part 2. The Message The most important message of The Boys in the Boat is teamwork, both in the sense of working as a part of a literal team and the metaphorical sense of trusting and cooperating with other people. In the book, Daniel James Brown examines the 1936 American Olympic rowing team made up mostly of juniors from the University of Washington. In order to succeed at the Berlin Olympics, the Americans had to learn how to work together to achieve a common goal, a gold medal. As the book explains, rowing is one of the most collaborative sports. An eight, on an eight-oar rowing team, all eight rowers must move in perfect or near-perfect synchronization. Even a tiny mistake can throw off the delicate rhythm of the team. Because oarsmen need to move together so precisely, they must develop a close psychological bond of friendship and respect to succeed. The Boys in the Boat isn't just the story of how the 1936 Olympic rowers perfected their technique and power. It's about how the nine teammates uh, learned to work together and become lifelong friends in the process. In particular, Brown studies the importance of teamwork by documenting the life of one of the nine Olympic team members, Joe Rands. Joe's life probably captures the importance of trust, cooperation, and respect more succinctly than that of any of his teammates. Joe's early life was full of tragedy, which pushed him to become more isolated and individualistic. His mother died when he was a child. Shortly afterwards, his father, Harry Rands, fled to Canada, leaving Joe to live with his aunt. A few years later, Harry married another woman, Hula Lafoyette, and began to take care of his son once again. But then he and Hula decided to move away and leave Joe, not yet an adult, to fend for himself. Joe rose to the task of providing for himself with the impressive initiative and drive, the very qualities that later made him an excellent rower. But he also trained himself not to rely on any other human beings. After so many years of betrayal and disappointment, he concluded that he could not depend on anyone other than himself. When he attended the University of Washington and joined the crew team, though, Joe's independence proved to be a liability. He was a talented athlete, but because he was hesitant to befriend his teammates or form a bond of trust with them, he struggled to grow from a good rower into a great one. In his junior year, however, Joe began to let some of his defenses come down, and not coincidentally, he became a much better rower. He spent a summer working alongside two of his teammates and received expert advice from George Pocock, the Washington team's advisor and a renowned boat maker. Pocock encouraged Joe to trust his teammates. He had no choice but to depend on them in the heat of the race. Pocock characterized a great crew team's trust and teamwork as a kind of religious ecstasy. Over the course of the book, then, Joe begins to build up with his teammates, eventually becoming so close with them that they were able to get into swing, which means they could row in perfect unison, almost without trying. By the end of 1936, the University of Washington team was the best in the world, not just because of the individual rower's strength or form, but because all nine teammates had learned to work together. It's often said that the the way people play sports represents the way they live their lives. In the case of the 1936 rowing team, the cliche is true. Having developed such a close bond, the nine teammates excelled at working to get with other people for the rest of their lives. Many of the teammates remained friends or d- for decades to come. Indeed, Joe Rance was still close with his teammate Roger Morris in the 2000s. Furthermore, many of the teammates worked at Boeing together. 
In spite of his lonely, isolated early years, Joe Rands had a long, happy life. He had a great job, a loving wife, and wonderful friends. As the book suggests, Joe finally achieved the religious experience to which George Pocock alluded. Furthermore, once he learned how to embrace the special feeling of trust and teamwork as a rower, Joe continued to embrace that feeling in every area of his life. Part 3. My Thoughts In conclusion, The Boys in the Boat really spoke to me, as I am a rower myself. It truly is an inspirational story, and in my opinion it can make anyone strive for greatness. These nine boys left a great wake, literally and figuratively, for anyone to follow. To conclude this podcast, I will leave you with a quote from George Pocock. It is hard to make that boat go as fast as you want to. The enemy, of course, is resistance of the water, as you have to displace the amount of water equal to the weight of men and equipment, but that very water is what supports you, and that very enemy is your friend. So is life. The very problems that you must overcome also support you and make you stronger in overcoming them.